Okay, in this lab we're doing the hand warmer uh, analysis, and for us to do that we need to get some masses for several different chemicals. So we're going to start off putting our weighing boat up on the balance, and we're going to zero that out. And we need to get three-ish grams of our charcoal. So we'll do that, and that's way too much, so we'll back that off a little bit. There's about two and a half. So somewhere between around around three. Yeah, that'll work. So we have 3.11 or 3.12. Again, we'll go 3.12 grams of charcoal. So 3.12 grams of charcoal. Then we need some salt. And we'll re-zero we'll re this again. And we need, also need about three grams of salt. And 3.10, so we'll go 3.10, oh, maybe 3.11, yeah, 3.10, 3.10 grams of salt. And then we need to have about 15 grams of our iron powder, which is going to be the substance that rusts to make this. So we'll re-zero that. And take our iron powder, and we need about 15 grams of that. There we go. So we have really close to that number. We have about 15.03, it looks like. So we got 15.03 grams for that. And then we need three milliliters of water. So we'll use our graduate cylinder to get our water. And we need about three or four milliliters. And yeah. So here's our water. And reading that, I get about 3.5 or 3.5 milliliters of water, 3.5 for that. Okay, so now we have all of our ingredients and we're going to put them into our beaker to simulate a hand warmer. So I have my charcoal going in. I have my salt going in. And I have my iron powder. Now these alone aren't going to do much for reacting. Uh, I am going to start collecting data by putting a temperature probe in here. And I'm going to start collecting data on their temperature. So I'm just going to kind of mix it up a little bit to get them all kind of blended together before I do the next step. And to get a baseline for my temperature as I do this. Okay, so. We have them mixed in really well. And I got a decent little baseline temperature here. And then I'm gonna add in my water. And by adding in the water, I am now going to get this reaction to run. So, just like before, we need to get this reaction to run. And we need to stir this continuously for this reaction. This one takes a little bit longer, so I'm not going to sit here on film and let, make you waste 10 minutes of time just watching me stir this. Okay, so we're just going to cut over to the graph here next. And we will collect all the data, but I'm just not going to film it all as we do this. So we're going to continue to stir until we've peaked out our data. And because we timed out, we had to start the data collection again. But we see where we ended the blue line. And then essentially we picked up directly from where we ended that blue line to our new yellow line. So we're not going to have a nice, clean, single graph of that. And that's because I made one mistake in my lab procedure, which is something that was common in that, the actual class data, too, is that we did set our software up to continually run data past three minutes. So if you look, there's 180 seconds is what it is running for data. And there's a way, I will show you this at the end of the video, to turn this on so it would not stop collecting data after three minutes. 
But I forgot to do that. So instead we'll have to deal with two lines in our graph, but that's okay because it's still data that's usable for us as we continue to work here. And here we're starting to see it kind of flat line. And we're starting to see that temperature isn't, con isn't really rising as much as it was before as we do this. Still going up, but not, as, not quite as fast as it was before. And actually, we're starting to see it kind of flatten line out here now. And almost even go down, not quite go down yet. But there we see the kind of the peak, and now it's starting to taper down. So we've reached the end of our data, and we have now maxed this out. All right. So that is the end of our data. Um, we have got our starting points or ending points. So what I should have done is over here on time mode base, I should have clicked on that, and I should have clicked on manual. So I did not do that, which has caused our problem. So that's what I should have done for this lab. But we had the data we need. We found a peak right here. We started to see it taper off. So it started to actually lose its energy at that point. So let's get a little bit of information. So we want to start way down here, and we want to find out the maximum and minimum. So over here, under graph options, I'm going to click on view my stats. And it's going to tell me what I got. So looking at the blue line, this is the stuff in blue right here, my minimum temperature at zero seconds was this, 22.295 degrees Celsius, okay? So that's when we just put them all together, and even without the water, they probably started to react a little bit and start to generate a little bit of heat there because the salt was in part of that. So that's the number we're going to use for our starting temperature or our initial temperature. So we'll call that 22.3 uh, to round it off to the decimal or to the tenths place here. So 22.3 degrees Celsius is our starting point. And then we're looking for the maximum temperature if we take a look at the yellow line. And the maximum temperature we got was 61.3 degrees right here. Okay, that's before, it's right at the peak before it started to taper and fall back down and get colder. So we reached the maximum temperature of 61.3 degrees Celsius with a minimum temperature of 22.3 degrees Celsius. So using that information and the masses that we collected initially in the video, you should now be able to uh, input that data into your lab and be able to complete the analysis. Thank you.